The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has approved more than half a billion U.S. dollars for Jamaica to address the COVID pandemic. But what's in it for me? Hey guys, I'm Kalila Reynolds and I'll explain why going back to the IMF isn't the same as before. This program is brought to you in partnership with the Ministry of Finance. Now, unless you just came back from a vacation on another planet, you're aware of what's going on around the world with COVID-19. Between the health crisis and the economic crisis, it is bad. Some are now saying the economic crisis will be even worse than the health crisis. In April, the Jamaican government reached out to the IMF for emergency help under its Rapid Financing Instrument, RFI. On May 15, the IMF board approved the request for 520 million U.S. dollars. That's about 70 billion Jamaican dollars. So what is the Rapid Financing Instrument? Is there another stringent reform program that we'll have to adhere to? You know, we just came out of the IMF program and now it may seem like we're running back. So here's the deal. Previously, when the IMF was mentioned, the term austerity would follow close behind. Remember that bitter medicine? But this time, the IMF loan, yes, it is a loan that we'll have to repay. It doesn't come with those same ties, and here's why. The rapid financing instrument, as the name suggests, is quick financial help to IMF member countries facing urgent balance of payment needs. And we can get this without a full-fledged IMF program. Now let's flash back to just six months ago, November 2019, when Jamaica ended the standby arrangement SBA with the IMF. That was the second of two reform programs we had with the fund. Under both of those programs, we had to meet stringent goals. And these included increasing our net international reserves. And to do that, the BOJ had to limit their intervention in the foreign exchange market, or in other words, allow the dollar to devalue. We also had to achieve a budget surplus, and that came with more taxes and less spending by the government. All of this to achieve a bigger goal of significantly reducing our debt, which I explained in another episode of What's in it for me. Now, even though the SBA ended last year, Jamaica has kept most of these reforms, if not all of them. Our leaders have been adamant that we won't go back to our irresponsible ways, so we've continued to monitor the economy and keep things in check on our own, even without the IMF whip. So although the program ended, we still maintain a fiscal surplus, the BOJ still pursues inflation targeting, and the Ministry of Finance still continues to pay down our debt. And all that has paid off. Because we've been so good in maintaining the reforms, the IMF has approved this new application very quickly. They're basically saying, what you're going through right now is bad, but it's not your fault. So here's some money to help yourself out. No strings attached. Just remember to pay us back with interest. Although if you watched my interview on taking stock with the IMF's representative to Jamaica, Karim Youssef, recently, you'll see that the interest rate is actually very, very low. Uh, and as far as the uh, rate of the, of the loan is concerned, uh, the IMF uses the SDR official interest rate. Um, and then there is a uh, 100 what? basis, which is 0 0.07, I believe, today. So very, very, very... No. Now, this situation is a bit ironic. The standby arrangement that ended in November was supposed to help us out in case of a sudden economic shock. 1.65 billion U.S. dollars was on standby. That's why they call it a standby arrangement, just in case we needed it. But we never took not even one red cent. In fact, we ended the program a bit early. And boy, those SBA funds would have come in handy now because COVID-19 definitely qualifies as a shock. So now we have the RFI. Not as much money as the SBA would have been, but still a huge help. And now that the money has been approved, what will it be used for? 
Well, COVID-19 has halted tourism and it's also decreased remittances, are two major sources of U.S. dollars. This is what the IMF is referring to when they say balance of payment problems. The loss of foreign exchange is reflected in the recent depreciation of our currency. And for a more detailed explanation of how COVID-19 has affected the foreign exchange rate, you can check out the last episode of Money Monday's JA. Now, at the end of April, Jamaica's net international reserves were at 3.13 billion U.S. dollars. That's about 100 million U.S. dollars less than it was in March. And because of this balance of payment problem, the first order of business will be for the BOJ to use some of the money from the IMF to increase the reserves. So increasing the reserves is of utmost importance. And hurricane season it's literally around the corner, and it's predicted to be an above-average season. Jeez, I don't even want to think about that. But we have to plan, like, just in case, you know, because we may need those funds. Now, last Friday, the BOJ reduced the foreign currency cash reserve for deposit-taking institutions from 15% to 13%. And what this does is it frees up 65 million U.S. dollars in cash to these institutions, which will hopefully reduce the demand. And we'll be watching to see if there's any change in the foreign exchange rate after that, because if there's no change, then the BOJ may intervene in the foreign exchange market to ease that depreciation of the Jamaican dollar, this time with some of the money from the IMF. So, increase the reserves, maybe intervene in the foreign exchange market. But 520 million U.S. dollars is a whole lot of money. What else could it be used for? Dun -dun -na, the budget. On May 13, the finance minister announced in Parliament that because of COVID-19, revenues and grants are expected to fall by $81 billion. And new expenses to the tune of $34 billion have popped up to decline by $81 billion. And in addition to that, we have new expenditure that would not have arisen if not for the COVID-19 pandemic of $34 billion. You add those two together, you get $115 billion. And if that were not enough, Mr. Speaker, the government has what you call other inflows, uh, which have been affected to the tune of $5 billion. Most of the tax losses tie back to tourism and remittances. From tourism, we would have earned, earned GCT, income tax, travel tax, guest accommodation room tax, special consumption tax, and there may even be some others that are missing. From remittances, I know for sure that we would have received GCT. So it only makes sense that without tourism and also less remittances, the government's revenue would fall, right? Now, Dr. Clark also said that $50 billion worth of spending will either be replaced by new spending or in some cases get cut from the budget. Now, that was before we heard the news that the IMF had approved our request. Now that these funds are being made available, the Ministry of Finance may not have to make so many cuts and instead use some of the money to make up for any shortfalls. What about a care program part two? In his presentation of the supplementary budget, Minister Clark disclosed that nearly $24 billion has been budgeted for COVID-related spending. This includes $17 billion for the CARE program, some of which you may have already received in the form of compassionate grants if you had applied and were approved. An additional $800 million will be given to farmers and fishermen, and $6 billion will go to COVID-19-related health expenses. If the ministry sees the need for more funding, money from the IMF could be used to further support the CARE program. And the IMF did in fact endorse the CARE program during their press conference on Monday. Well, the supplementary debates are to continue, so we'll have to listen carefully and follow the Ministry of Finance on their social media pages at MOF Jamaica to hear how the 520 million US dollars from the IMF will be used. I also post hashtag breaking money news on Twitter and on my IG stories at Kalila Ray. So follow those pages and subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kalila Ray. And of course, turn on those post notifications. That's it for this episode of What's in it for me, brought to you in partnership with the Ministry of Finance. 
I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.